People who seem to think that there's something to be gained by crippling or dismantling the power of the central government in a country in the name of some libertarian principle are in many ways playing with fire. Um, we see a lot of this sort of rhetoric uh, in the Tea Party movement where a lot of people seem to think that government is by its very nature bad and the best thing to do for society is to uh, get government completely out of the picture, get it completely out of people's lives. Looks good on paper, but the problem is people who take that sort of attitude really have no grasp of history and the processes and the reasons by which government got into people's lives in the first place. In the West, it happened around the turn of the 20th century, where um, wealth had become concentrated to such an extent that um, the phenomenon of what I suppose the, the Elizabethans would have called over-mighty subjects actually threatened to displace the authority of the government. Rich robber barons. Uh, and, and this is not just an American uh, phenomenon. Um, it took place throughout the West. And the damaging thing about the robber barons was they just said, look, we're just making money. We're not out to harm anybody. Um, but, you know, capitalism implies competition. And in a competition, somebody wins. Um, and it's not ultimately our problem if there are losers in this game. We don't consciously seek to create losers, but we have subscribed as a society to a uh, political and economic system whereby for every winner, there's a loser. Now, the problem with that kind of thing is um, it's actually... In, an, in its advanced uh, state, it's an actual menace to the social order. There was an actual danger throughout the West around the turn of the 20th century of a social revolution. Because the people who actually had the power in society, i.e. the rich people and not necessarily the government, did not feel responsible for the well-being of everyone else so they simply didn't do anything about it. Um, and the lot of the not-so-well-off people in society suffered to such an extent that um, you had anarchist and socialist assassinations, bombs going off in cafes in France and in squares in Chicago and uh, uh, shootouts even in peaceful places at the time, like London something had to be done or the actual social order was in serious trouble. That was why the government got involved, the progressive movements or the liberal movements in the West who weren't necessarily hostile to capitalism but they believed that capitalism had to be reformed in order to preserve it, in order to make it viable because if it went down the road that it was going the whole thing might actually be um, blown apart, as eventually did happen in Russia and nearly happened in Germany um, and in France and in a number of other European countries. If you just let people concentrate wealth to such an extent and you let them off the hook uh, in terms of um, any sort of social responsibility, this is what you get. You get um, a lopsided, uh, unstable social order, which may end up violently correcting itself. The other uh, great impetus to government intervention in society, of course, were the two world wars and uh, many other uh, minor wars, but generally it was the two world wars that um, brought uh, the state into everyone's lives. A lot of people said, well, that was simply because the government had to grab a bunch of power uh, in order to efficiently run the war, or the wars. Well, yes and no. It also emboldened 
the lower classes to say, wait a minute, we're going out and we're shedding our lives in the trenches here. We're going out and we're, we're uh, doing the dirty work, the hard work of fighting these wars. And the rich capitalist class actually does quite well out of these wars, which they unfortunately did. We want something out of this too. And we have earned it by shedding our blood. We've earned the right to expect some sort of reward for the sacrifices that we have willingly undertaken for our country and for the greater good of humanity. So, it's not just some case of bleeding heart um, altruists saying that, oh well, we've got to get involved in uh, in the economy, the government has to get involved in the economy in order to right some wrongs here. And it's not a case of the government just deliberately grabbing a bunch of power. The people, the people of the societies involved, expected the government to do something. They expected the government to take the lead in rectifying what they saw as a serious imbalance in the social order. It's all very well to say that governments are bad and governments just all they ever do is tax people and if you don't pay your taxes they simply coerce you, they throw you in jail or whatever. But in a way, if you refuse to think publicly, you are actually part of the problem that created the impetus for the government to get involved in the first place. One need only read a history book. Thank you.